me to get there. I'm hungry. This car smells weird. You all know me. Know how I earn a living. You must unlearn what you have learned. You all right? You look a wee bit shaky. You can't breathe. Yes, I'm. I'm a bit nervous myself. Gosh, not again. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. We live or we die by the clock. We never turn our back on it. And we never, ever allow ourselves the sin of losing track of time. I don't tell you something about time. My time is worth money, and I don't think you make that kind of money to pay me for my time. Only a true friend would be that truly apt. Okay, Michael. Regular or extra crispy? Original uh, extra crispy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I've always been a fan of the original. The original KFC. How you doing? My name is Michael. This is the Freight Broker TV Podcast. It is a uh, wet day here in Arkansas. Kind of uh, chilly. It's uh, 48. 48. Now we are recording the, uh, we're recording this uh, podcast on May 12th. Now granted, it's 7.44 in the morning, but, uh, and it's wet. But even for uh, 7.44 in the morning, we're about 15 degrees below normal. It's kind of uh, kind of on the chilly side, you know what I mean? Let's see if we get those levels set right. Okay, how are you making it through the uh, coronavirus week number? Who cares anymore? We're tired of it. Time to go. Man, I tell you, if we don't lower the boom on China, I mean, seriously. <laughs> you know, this is almost like... Uh, Almost like a planned attack. My wife and I were talking about this yesterday. Why are the meatpacking companies, why are their people getting get, getting infected? So, you know, so many of them. Pretty strange. Uh, you know, people have been saying, well, it's because they're so close. But how did it get there to begin with? You know, that, that's attacking our food source. But if we allow China to have the power they had over this country in the future... If we don't bring this, uh, if we don't bring our manufacturing home, man, oh man, man, oh man. You know, it's a political year. You know, we got elections coming up, presidential elections. And the closer it gets, the crazier it gets. You know, just, just remember, if a politician's mouth is moving, <laughs> you get the idea. Well, fuel stabilized. Diesel uh, this week, 2.39 a gallon, pretty much what it was last week. I think it was down just, I don't know, very, very little, but still holding out there at 2.39. Gasoline, though, up over a nickel from last week. Up to $1.85, six cents uh, increase. So that's, uh, I don't know if we should be happy about that or kind of disappointed. You know, actually, I guess we should be happy that an uh, oil company makes a little bit more money. I'm, you know, somebody cut off spigot somewhere, so it caused prices to go up a little bit. But anyway, a big hoop to do going on this week. Well, lately. And I'm afraid it's going to be one of those whoop de doos that last for a while. You know, uh, in the past, I've told you about uh, OIDA and TIA. You know, in the past, we've talked about the $75,000 property broker surety bond. Now, it used to be 10000 and the TIA and uh, OIDA teamed up. In the past, I've told you that was weird because TIA and OIDA are pretty much enemies. Neither one pretty much likes the other, but they teamed up on that uh, property broker shorty bond thing years ago. Well, something came up now, and uh, this is going to prove what I was telling you about, that they are enemies, because they're going to fight this tooth and nail. 
All right, here's, uh, here's the deal. Let me kind of spell this out for you. You may or may not have already heard about this. You may or may not have already heard about this from uh, podcast videos or whatever, you know, from uh, recent podcast videos. I know a few weeks ago we talked about the uh, truckers down in Texas, South Texas, pulling over to the side of the road to protest low rates. Now uh, the protest went to Washington outside the White House. I guess it got President Trump's attention. You know, he praised the truckers. This was uh, uh, just a few days ago. And uh, he remarked that uh, trucking companies are upset or these drivers or owner-operators are upset because they don't think they're getting their fair share. They just want their fair share. Well, oh, I just jumped on that bandwagon. <laughs> now they're wanting Washington to get more involved and make it more transparent. TIA, obviously, Transportation Intermediaries Association. They're going to fight that tooth and nail. Who's going to win? Who knows? But here's my point. Quit crying about low rates and do something about it. What do you do about it? You say no. That's it. You say no to low rates. But they won't go up. Yes, they will. They will go up. Believe me. Uh, you know, a shipper... If they can't get their orders delivered to their customer, they're going to be out of business. Period. I, you know, I, I don't know how to uh, better say it, but trucking companies, <laughs> you are the ones that uh, set the rates. It's not the broker. It's not the shipper. It's the trucking company. You're the ones to uh, say what you've got to get paid to move. You know, years ago, and I've, I've said this, I've held to this belief, when trucking became deregulated back years ago, <laughs> don't think the government didn't know what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew they were going to create competition. Competition was going to drive down rates. And here we are. Because, uh, honestly, honestly, before regulation, yeah, there were bingo stamps and all that kind of stuff, but uh, before regulation, rates were where they needed to be for a trucking company to be profitable. You know what's sad? Before regulation, there were rates when fuel was like quarter a gallon, 50 cents a gallon. There were rates out there that were $1.25 and up, you know, over a dollar a mile. And we're back to that today. And, and rates should be a lot more. You know, I, I would be the first one to say it. Uh, you know, I used to say when the fuel was stupid, stupid high, and it, the chance it might go back to that 239 a gallon right now. But I used to say, you know, uh, 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 the rate per mile should be equal or exceed the cost of a gallon of fuel. You know, you think about it back uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you know, when trucks were getting paid dollar, dollar twenty five a mile and uh, fuel was below a dollar. You know, I remember fuel was 25, 30 cents a gallon. You know, but the thing is, they've, they've added road taxes, fuel taxes, they taxed everything. You know, it just made it stupid. And, uh, you know, a trucking company gets out here and they start complaining because the rates are too low. I, that, that just bumfuddles me. What do you mean the rates are too low? Did you not know this before you got you got into the industry? And I don't mean to sound I, I don't mean to sound coarse here. I don't. It's just that uh, it's almost like these are little kids stomping their feet, you know, because they can't go out here and run their company. And find and get and negotiate their own customers to get the rates they need to be successful. They want to blame the broker. Now, I'll be the first one to say it. I've said it in the past. Hey, a broker that is, uh, 
true honestly you know gouging or stealing i mean you know it's it's uh especially in these times let me put it this way let me put it this way if i've got a customer and they're paying me five dollars a mile to move a load from point a to point b all right generally i'll start my negotiation do 20 percent net okay so five dollars twenty percent that'd be you know what put it four dollars a mile i'd be paying the truck now a lot of you are going to say immediately well you making a dollar a mile is too much no it's not no i put the work in i found the customer i cultivated the customer i built the relationship i made that customer what it is i got the rate up to five dollars a mile if i'm paying four dollars a mile and you want to haul that load great if you don't like that that i'm paying you four dollars a mile you don't think it's enough don't take the load go find another load it's that simple i mean free market welcome to capitalism now with that said what i was getting at before i got on that rant is simply if the customer's paying me five dollars a mile i'm not going to pay a truck four dollars a mile if the market rate is two and a quarter 250 do you see what i'm saying i'll pay the market rate but why should i why should i pay the truck four dollars a mile just because i'm in business too you know you are a trucking company i found that customer just like you can find a customer but you got to take the time to do it yeah you know you may know how to drive a truck but if you're going to own a truck you're going to be in business you've got to know how to be in business you got to think like a business you got to be a business person you can't just be a truck driver and expect the business to take care of itself and i've said this over and over and over again <laughs> you know if you're going to be a uh, owner operator operating under your own authority you really need to know how to run a business you need to have sales skills you need to know how to market your company you need to have those people skills you need to know how to run a business it's that simple what happens today is so many people you know and i did it too but i learned real quick that uh, you better get your ducks in a row or or the business is going to eat you up and spit you out but basically what i'm getting at people start out as a company driver they get out there as a company driver they begin making money they see the owner operators they see what kind of money the owner operator is making per mile they start getting that churning in their gut where they want to be an owner operator but the cost of a truck is just way beyond their means at least at this point in their mind so they take the easy route they become a lease purchase operator. In other words, they lease a truck from the trucking company that they're driving for, and all of a sudden they are an owner operator. Yeah, they're making the bucks, they're paying everything out too. They think they're building equity in the truck, but what's going to happen? They're going to, you know, not, I, I don't know the numbers, but I bet 95% of the people that do at least purchase bail before they pay off the truck. And as we found through Aero and other trucking companies that have gone, gone belly up, that were doing a lease purchase, a lot of those trucks were leased themselves, so they couldn't be sold. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's just nutty. But uh, if the company driver that went into the lease purchase, they get ticked off and decide they want to move on, they want to quit well they find out real quick it's not their truck all the money they paid into it is gone there's no equity back it's almost like it's been repossessed not repossessed it's not going to show up on your credit maybe a good experience but uh you're walking away with nothing so the uh, company driver decides i'm not going to let this happen again and they go out and they buy a truck then one thing leads to another leads to another leads to another next thing you know they're in their truck and they're thinking hey 
I could buy a trailer, get my own authority, use a broker for all of my loads, and I'll make money. At that moment, when that thought hit your mind that you could use a broker for 100% of your loads, you went out of business. You just don't know it. You've got to have your own customers. If you don't have your own customers, you're not going to make any money. You're going to make enough to pay your truck payments. You're going to make enough to pay your overhead. But you're not making any money to put back and grow. It behooves you. It behooves you to go out here and learn about a business operation. Learn how to be a business person. Learn business. Learn accounting, some basic accounting. Talk to your CPA, a bookkeeper, whatever. Talk to some salespeople. Matter of fact, you know, that's what Taltoa does. We train people how to be a broker, which essentially is the same thing an owner-operator needs to learn how to get their own customers. It's basically the same principles. And the nice thing about if you're an owner-operator as, as opposed to a broker, it, it, I'll be honest with you, it, it's harder for a broker, or it could be harder for a broker to get a customer than a truck because a broker has no assets. And when I say assets, I'm talking about equipment. You've got the equipment. You've got it. You just got to uh, knock on a few doors, make a few phone calls, sit down, discuss it. Now, this is usually where I start getting all the excuses. Well, they say I got to have five trucks. They say I got to do this. Well, they say I got to do... Oh, okay, that's what they say. Find somebody that doesn't say that. No, as a salesperson, no is going to be the most common response you will get. Period. People are going to tell you no. If you don't like it, well, maybe you shouldn't be in this business because that's part of the business people telling you no. Successful salespeople get told no all the time, yet they're successful. That's the state of mind you've got to get in. So what? Somebody says no. Knock on the next door. Make that next phone call. Don't care about the people that say no. You're looking for the people that say yes. You know, I almost guarantee you, you can go to any sales organization on this planet Find the most successful salesperson in every sales organization. And I promise you, they are the ones that get the most no's. Learn how to sell. It's not that difficult. Matter of fact, if you're an owner-operator, you're wanting to learn how to get your own customers, fine. Check out Taltoa, T-A-L-T-O-A dot com. My name is Michael. I'm, I'm your host here on Freight Broker TV, the podcast, the videos and such. And I am the lead consultant at Taltoa, and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. And yes, I may sound a little aggravated and angry right now because, hey, I started out as a driver, a company driver, small fleet owner. And it, it just, uh, every time I hear somebody start yelling about how the broker's done me wrong, the broker's done me wrong. You're letting them do you wrong. Quit working with the broker. Learn how to get your own customers. Bottom line, get your own customers. I tell you, that will get me on my soapbox quicker than anything. Somebody blaming somebody else for their own problems. Seriously. You've got to take control of your destiny. I mean, seriously. Nobody's going to do it for you. Oh, Ida, they're going to yell from the highest mountain. I've always said this. Going to, they, they are going to yell and yell and yell. And at the same time, okay, they're out here yelling. Okay, there needs to be more transparency. You know, hey, you know, the, the independent operators, the brokers aren't treating people right. Hey, you know, Washington, step in here, fix this. But on the other side of that coin, 
they're going, hey, here's what we're doing. You need to join. You need to join. Pay your membership fees. You know, help us help you. It's part of their membership drive. And that's fine. I have no problem with what they're doing. I mean, that's what they should be doing. That's why people join OIDA. But the problem is, I wish OIDA would tell these trucking companies that, hey, the reason you're failing isn't because of the broker. It's because you won't go out here and get your own customers. You're expecting the broker just to roll over and work for you for free. And what do you think? You know, you think 2% is too much for a broker? 5%? 10%? Where's the line? What what line do you draw? You know, you think about it. You know, in business, a good business deal is one both parties accept and agree on. Both of you walk away happy. If you're taking a load because you're just taking a load, you know, well... Maybe if you say no, those rates would go up. That's all I got to say. And I'll be the first one to tell you, too. Well, I'll tell you right now. Uh, this 20 years ago. I had a client, and they, had, they shipped out of Richland, Washington. All right? Richland, Washington. Uh, no kidding. The most I could ever get out of that client to move a load out of Richland, Washington, was dollar a mile. Now, this 20-plus years ago. Dollar a mile. That was it. I brokered those loads for 90 cents a mile. And to be honest with you, I was almost embarrassed to do it. But what I found is what the shipper knew <laughs> that I learned was that uh, there was nothing else in that area that shipped out. Nothing. Nothing. So 90 cents a mile, it's, you know, a dollar a mile was right in the ballpark. And, you know, I got to take something, pay my bills. You know, something you need to understand is for a broker to pretty much make any money and break even, they've got to do 10% net, period. 10% net. They've got to, you know. Uh, but if you're an agent, and that's why we preach it to you, and, you know, as a client, you know, your, your, your broker's got to do 10% net, and a lot of times a broker will not pay an agent if the net is less than 10%, because you think about it, the broker's paying you 60% of that 10% as an agent. You know, we're not talking about, what, Gordon Gecko, greed is good. No, but people should have the opportunity to make money. People should have the opportunity that are better than others to make more money. The problem I see with trucking is that so many people don't know how to get their own customers. Their complaint isn't because the rates are low. It's because the brokers aren't paying them what they want or what they feel they should have. You know, I've dealt with trucking companies, small trucking companies. And honestly, the smaller the trucking company, the more they act, they have this attitude that they're doing you a favor. You're in business to make money. You're in business to keep your customer happy. You're in business to provide services to your customer. And somehow we lost that somewhere when it came to these, uh, some of these trucking companies. I don't know. Once a driver, always a driver. I've been a driver. I'm still a, you know, at heart I'm a driver. I feel for the guys. I get it. Yeah, if a, if a broker is gouging you, that's not right. Okay? But on the other hand, if you're saying yes, if you're saying yes and taking the load, then what are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? The way you get the rates up is you say no. A lot of negative headlines in the news. You know, you watch this USA truck post net loss on declining revenue quarter one. Expeditors seize profits. Revenue fell in quarter one. Trucking sheds over 88,000 jobs in April. People are freaking out over all this stuff. Yes, we're going to see negatives in the news. I mean... Look around. <laughs> Look what's happening. Of course there's going to be negative. 
You've got to hang in there, and you got to keep working toward the positive. You know, think about salmon. Seriously. You know, salmon, you know, they swim upstream. You think that's easy? No, it can't be. Yet they do it. What I'm getting at here, you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Now, here, here's, a, uh, here's an example of what I'm talking about. All my clients right now going through Taltoa, I, I think it's a great time for them, you know, learning how to broker, getting everything started up and rolling. They understand going in that right now it's tough. Freight's uh, few and far between because a lot of companies are shut down because nothing's shipping or being manufactured because their plants are down. Uh, but the th only thing that is really shipping is food stuff and essentials. Very little construction or, you know, unnecessary items are being shipped right now, which causes shipping to be down, which explains a lot of the negatives. Okay, we get all that. And, hold on, I just got a thing in, let's see. Truckload volume starts to show sign of recovery. Just got that in from DAT. We'll check that out, being a video real soon. We'll be talking about that, but... But anyway, they know it's it's an uphill it's an uphill battle. It's normally an uphill battle for any new broker getting started in this industry because you're starting from scratch. You've got to build the business. You got to get that customer base. You got to start uh, having loads to be able to work. You know, one customer doesn't do it. One phone call doesn't do it. We're talking about hundreds. You know, it, this this business is not for those lazy at heart. You know, if you're a true entrepreneur and you want to make money, you want to be successful, well, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the effort. Okay, bottom line, you got you got to do it. And our clients that come into this, they know it. And the ones that are, you know, graduating, uh, graduating is a bad word, but moving into the mentorship program, I say graduating is a bad word because we're not a school. We are a consulting firm, and our consulting packages includes in-depth training for those wanting to start out as a broker or broker agent. But the point is, we've got a lady that just started here a couple of weeks ago. She gets this, moved her first load with the, you know, in just a couple of weeks, three hundred dollar net. She's brand new. Never worked in transportation before, never. But she was out able to go out of here, get a client, get a load, get a truck to move that load and get a $300 net. There is no reason you as a trucking company cannot do the same thing. Go out here, get a customer, and start moving loads for those customers. You know, if a trucking company is operating correctly, okay, you're a trucking company, you have a base of operation, that base of operation should be in the general area uh, well, wherever you're located, but the base of operation, you should have your own customers within that general area is what I'm getting at. So maybe your base of operation is Oklahoma City, all right? Then you should have some customers there around Oklahoma City. That's your outbound freight. That's where you've sat down. You negotiated a contract. You're working direct for that customer. You're hauling their loads. That's where you're getting 100% of the rate. There's no broker involved. You are now making money. They got a low going to Georgia. You get to Georgia, what do you want to do? You want to get empty and get back to Oklahoma City as quick as you can, which we will call that a backhaul. So you can pick up another one of your customers' direct loads. We call that a head haul. That's where you're making your money. You know, when you're in Georgia trying to get back to Oklahoma City, you're looking more to get back to be able to service your customer, get top dollar, and you're willing to take a cut on the backhaul rate, that's when you should be using a broker. A broker's a service, we're not a dispatcher. We are a service to help you. A dispatch service, yeah, we'll talk about that later. If you're using a dispatch, if you're using a dispatch service, well, whatever the broker's taking off, the dispatch service is adding to it because they're taking off five to ten percent as well if you're using a dispatch service you might want to check them out because probably what they are doing is uh, going to the load board getting loads from brokers giving the broker 15 20 percent off the top 
and then taking whatever they're charging you off the top. So when it gets to you, you're really not making money. Now you've got a reason to complain. But it, whose fault is that? Well, it's your fault because you're using a dispatch service instead of going out here and finding your own customers. You know, the money you're paying a dispatch service or if you're using a broker 100% of the time for all your loads, if you would add that up, you would find you could pay somebody a pretty good salary to do nothing but find customers and get your loads, which is going to allow you to really start making money. And that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Man, oh man, have I been on my soapbox today. All right, I know I'm going to get some flack on this broadcast, but hey, you know, seriously, I, I get tired of it. I get tired of it. Do what you need to do. Quit complaining about what's not working and find something that will work. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, this uh, tow company out in North Carolina that were, uh, that were uh, booting trucks. And then charging st stupid money to get the uh, trucks for drivers to get their trucks back or owner operators. Well, this has gotten the attention of the North Carolina Attorney General. He's suing the tow company for predatory booting of semi trucks. Authorities in North Carolina are taking action against a tow company accused of booting and towing trucks hauling essential supplies during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, last week, it looks like, about a week ago, North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein announced that he had filed the state's first price-gouging lawsuit on the coronavirus crisis against Charlotte-based A1 Towing Solutions, Inc. The suit is asking for restitution for truck drivers and their companies who were affected by improper towing and bidding practices. Stein accuses A1 Towing and Satterfield, the owner of uh, A1 Towing, of violating North Carolina's price gouging statute and engaging in deceptive trade practices and unfair debt collection practices during the coronavirus emergency. The suit states that A1 Towing improperly and predatorily, <laughs> pred predatorily, pre I think I said it right, and predatorily, <laughs> That's a weird word. Booted and towed truck, trucks hauling food, water, bleach, and needed medical supplies in spite of the fact that the truck drivers had obtained permission from property owners to park. From a news release uh, issued uh, from Stein's office after towing or booting the trucks, the defendants allegedly forced drivers to pay exorbitant amounts up to $4,000 for their release. The defendants also allegedly engaged in other illegal practices, including, but not limited to, double booting a tractor trailer and its attached trailer to double the price for removing the boots, <laughs> charging inflated fees for use of a credit card and bogus fees for filings with the DMV and threatening to increase fees for the release of the trucks unless the drivers paid immediately. These improper booting and towing actions led to the delay in the delivery of critical needed supplies. Now this is price gouging. This is just wrong. This, the, uh, you know, let's see, what else? Uh, something in here. Okay, this company, this company has been uh, barred. Let's see, I saw it in here earlier. Okay, yeah, the Stein, now this is the North Carolina Attorney General. He's attain, obtained a restraining order that's going to prevent A1 towing and the owner, Satterfield, of A1 towing from towing or booting any vehicles until a court hearing. And that guy needs to be nailed to the wall. That's just wrong in so many ways. Okay, other news. CVSA says two upcoming driver blitzes are still going to be happening. In spite of the pandemic, uh, CVSA road check, 72-hour check, it was scheduled for May 5th through 7th, has been postponed. However, the CVS, uh, CVSA says that there are currently no plans to cancel or postpone 
Operation Safe Driver Week. It's going to take place uh, July 12th through 18th. And Brake Safety Week, scheduled for August 23rd through 29th. Now, Operation Safe Driver Week, this isn't just for big trucks, apparently. It states here that law enforcement agencies throughout North America are going to be increasing patrols, looking for dangerous driving behaviors from both passenger vehicle drivers and commercial uh, vehicle drivers. These dangerous driving behaviors include speeding, distracted driving, unsafe lane changes, impaired driving, and failure to obey a traffic device. Pretty much, isn't that what cops do daily anyway? Well, CVSA says that it will continue to monitor the pandemic and announce the new dates for the International Road Check and update the status of Operation Safe Driver Week and Brake Safety Week. Uh, when possible, so keep it here on FBTV Podcast, and we will keep you up to date. All right, I'm not going to apologize for my rant. If I if I ruffled a few feathers, I'm sorry. But I imagine those feathers that I ruffled are the ones that are using a broker 100% of the time that won't get off their butt to get their own customers. Get your own customers, this problem goes away. You know, you get your own customers, you find out that... Uh, Shippers have, you know, they're the ones uh, following you to set the right. You know, but as long, you know, as long as there is a truck to haul a load for a dollar a mile, that shipper has no reason to pay more than a dollar a mile. Just because you think they should, well, give them a reason why they should. In other words, don't haul cheap freight. All right, go have a go have a good week. Period. And 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 don't make fun of people wearing a mask. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.